Thank you, uh, Sue. Uh, this will be my, uh, actually my fifth uh, Congress as president of Netball Fiji, and I'm excited to be standing here again amongst all of you. We are so, so looking forward to having you all in Fiji in 2021. So from us, Mbula Vinaka. Uh, we are going to give you just an update of, uh, of the preparations that we have done. The preparations that we've uh, done in, uh, in Fiji. Uh, so uh, in terms of governance, we've registered the company and uh, the company is called Totoka Netball World Cup 2021. We've also appointed board members who have a, a mix of professional skills from corporate governance, finance and audit law, marketing, insurance, and of course, banking. A brief on our board members, Lorraine Sito, who is the chairperson of the Netball World Youth Cup 2021. She um, has an extensive experience with the Reserve Bank of Fiji, which is our central bank in Fiji, uh, holds a lot of uh, important board position, including that with the Institute of Bankers and, of course, the Institute of Accountants in Fiji. Lawrence Stickeram is uh, the National Sales Manager at Coca-Cola Amatil Limited. He's also, he also holds a lot of uh, board position. Most importantly, he's uh, got uh, quite an experience in events uh, management, uh, having managed over the last 30 years two of the greatest sporting events in Fiji, being the Coca-Cola Games, which is athletics for secondary schools, uh, students, and the Maris Rugby Sevens. We also have uh, Anna Tukete, a lawyer by profession who sits on a lot of boards also and uh, is also a judicial officer with World Rugby. And then we have uh, Preeti Pritika, uh, sits on several boards and is also an, in, an accountant by profession and is the immediate uh, vice president of the internal auditors of Fiji. Dates. We are excited to bring the confirmed dates for the Netball World Youth Cup 2021, and that's June 10th to the 19th. Uh, June uh, 8 and 9 would be the Congress dates, but these dates were, were considered or were decided uh, given uh, key factors one of which is that it's a, a non-peak holiday season. For those of you who know Fiji, it's a tourist destination. And if you come during a peak holiday season, you're expecting to pay higher airfares and of course higher accommodation. In terms of Suva, Suva is our business capital. It's uh, not, a, not a place which tourists frequent uh, so it's quite an expensive place, but uh, we know that uh, come June 10th and 19th, we should be able to offer affordable accommodation and cheaper flights into Fiji also. The other major reason is that it's our university semester break. When I say university, that's the university owned by the, Osh, uh, the Pacific uh, region and that's the University of the South Pacific. Uh, so uh, teams would have access to really cheap accommodation at the student accommodation at the campus. And the cam campus is located right opposite the National Sports Complex where the venue, the Vodafone Arena uh, is located. Apart from that, we are hoping to bring you uh, to engage a lot of university students as volunteers for the event. The third important reason is we have government support for these states. Uh, you know, government and agency support, and they've rallied behind us in regards to holding the event on these states. In terms of accommodation in Fiji, uh, in Suva in particular, there is a wide range of accommodation right up to the five stars to the really, really cheap accommodation, apart from the university accommodation. So uh, just in summary, this is what, are you, what you're looking at. The Grand Pacific Hotel, those are in US dollars. That's uh, a rate for one night. You're looking at US 270 per night. 
the Holiday Inn, a similar price, Novotel Hotel at US 200, and the list goes on. For the last three, those are apartments that, uh, that's uh, Silver Motor Inn, Quest, and Elixir. Those are apartments that are available. But apart from this, there are numerous other accommodation that we have not included. The Grand Pacific Hotel, this is uh, where we hope to hold the Congress and we, we hope that most of you will uh, book into for the event. That's just a pictorial of what's available. And of course, uh, I think earlier this year, last year, we hosted British royalty at the GPH. They stayed there. The, that's the seating capacity. It's uh, just a little bit bigger than this room. It can seat 500 uh, uh, delegates. So we have a great con uh, Congress venue already. The Holiday Inn, which is right next door, it's a one minute walk away from GPH, owned by the same company. That's what it looks like, and this is where we hope to put, uh, to put all our umpires in, and any other person that would like to, to stay there. In terms of university accommodation, we have uh, some pictures for you. Um, the accommodation, uh, it's uh, apartment-based, eight bedroom apartments. Each bedroom has a study desk, a chair, fan, storage space, and a comfortable bed. Of course, uh, there's laundry facilities on each uh, apartment, and, uh, and of, of course, linen will be provided. In terms of catering, uh, we have an indicative cost of what uh, catering would look like if you stay at the university. A breakfast, lunch, and dinner package would uh, cost about US $30 per person per day. Lunch and dinner only is US 24 and of course, dinner only is US $12. Venue. The venue is the Vodafone Arena. Uh, we here have photos there of uh, the Fiji Pearls and the Silver Ferns. This is a game from 2015. And of course, uh, the, silver, uh, the South African Proteas and uh, the Fiji Pearls game from 2017. So uh, the two courts configuration, when we have two courts, we have a seating capacity of 2,340. A one-quart configuration is 3,180 with the bleachers coming out. Uh, the governor of Fiji has, uh, in the last two years, committed US 8 million for major upgrades into the venue with the view of uh, hosting uh, major events inclusive of the Netball World Youth Cup 2021. Major improvements to the venue so far uh, they've uh, installed new wooden floors, they have new windows, there's a big uh, LED screen, new seat and bleachers, new ventilation for pavilion areas, there's a new roof cladding, uh, furniture and fitting has been replaced in all rooms, uh, covered teams and VIP arrival areas, and now two new uh, covered halls featuring uh, wooden floors also. So the venue itself has four netball courts. Uh, with the, two, the extension, uh, the new extension with the two. So this is uh, what was the Vodafone Arena, and this is what is the uh, extension uh, uh, you know, shown on that image. Inside the arena, that is uh, what was to the left. That's uh, currently what is. Uh, these were photos taken from last week. So you see the bleachers uh, have been replaced. You'd also see that the seats have also been replaced. The extension, that's uh, the extension, that's the works that's uh, currently being carried out uh, on the extension, the two courts, the two new courts that we hope uh, you know, would be open before the end of this year. In terms of training venues, uh, we have the Vodafone Arena and the Vodafone Arena extension with the two courts. We have the FMF Gene and uh, the National Netball Center. All of this is located in the vicinity of the National Sports Complex. In terms of uh, airport transfers, our international airport is in Nandi. 
That's about three hours drive from Suva. We also have an airport uh, that's near Suva. It's called Nosori. And uh, that's about 40 minutes drive uh, to Suva. So we are hope we, uh, transfers will be arranged regardless of where you want to, to come into, whether it be Nandi or Nosori. But we are encouraging everyone to come to Nosori. Uh, there are major upgrades that will uh, happen in Nosori, uh, and we are hoping that more planes can land in Nosori. Currently, the runway is too short. That's not to scare you. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Boeing 737 safely, can safely land in Nosori. Uh, we have uh, direct flights from uh, Auckland and Sydney landing in Nosori. So, if you come through Auckland or in Sydney, you can come directly to, to Suva through No Sorry. Uh, in terms of television and broadcast, we've had discussion with Fiji TV and Sky Sport uh, New Zealand. Both are keen to provide support here. Uh, they've uh, previously uh, worked together in uh, major events, especially in, in terms of Super Rugby. Uh, live streaming, that's also an option that we are looking into and we'll be talking with uh, uh, Claire and her team in regards to how that was done in, uh, in Botswana. And uh, we've also had discussion uh, with Fiji TV on this. Uh, marketing and PR plan, uh, we uh, have met with the Tourism Fiji. They are the ones that will market the event for us, especially in the New Zealand, Australia and the UK. These are the, the tourist markets that they target. And so uh, they will market this event for Fiji. We are also working on providing a similar package for other parts of the world, but the general idea is uh, to market the event as a holiday package. I mean, if you've traveled all the way to Fiji, we believe that this, that investment can be good, put to good use by seeing other parts of Fiji apart from the business side, which is Suva. Uh, locally, we have media partners who will market the event for us. Uh, we've registered uh, the event website, uh, the domain being uh, nwic2021fiji.com.fj. Uh, and uh, currently, we've got some eager USB, that's a university students, IT students who are working on the website. Uh, social media, um, we've created a page, and we are looking into creating uh, one for Twitter and in Instagram also. Uh, this has been completed and we are going to provide this to INF uh, maybe this afternoon, uh, risk assessment and contingency planning. Uh, so these were the risk metrics that was used and the priority of risk. And we'd like to acknowledge uh, here the work, uh, the assistance that was provided to us by Netball New Zealand in putting this together. So thank you, Netball New Zealand. Uh, in terms of ticketing uh, planning structure, we have, uh, uh, for pool games, uh, there will be only 2,340 tickets that will be made available. And of course, the final two days, we go up to uh, a little bit over 3,000. Uh, those are the ticketing structure. We will sell some overseas, and the rest will be reserved for our adopter school program, our VIPs, and of course, uh, uh, our local uh, local market for the locals. Um, sorry. And uh, the final two days, uh, 1,500 would be sold overseas. Uh, and of course, 100 VIPs and so on. Um, we've, uh, we're collaborating with, uh, with um, the following groups, the Ministry of Youth and Sports, Ministry of Tourism, Ministry of Economy, Tourism, Fiji, the Fiji National Sports Commission, the Fiji Sports Council, Fiji Airways and Fiji Link, and of course, uh, the Suva City Council. Um, as I said, uh, it's, uh, we're excited about this event. This will be the largest uh, event that we will host in Fiji for an exclusive female sport. So, uh, you know, we, we, we hope that we will have sellout crowds when the Silver Ferns visited Fiji in 2015, uh, we sold out. It was a sellout crowd in Fiji. So, uh, you know, we hope that 
you can all join us in Fiji, uh, bring your teams and uh, bring yourselves. Uh, and we'd like to, we'd also like to, you know, uh, we know that uh, Sri Lanka, Singapore and Malaysia, they are the first three teams that have qualified and uh, we look forward to having uh, the other 17 teams, 16 teams, sorry, the other 12 teams <laughs> confirmed soon. So we leave you with a taste of Fiji and uh, something uh, that uh, we hope that you'll experience when you join us in Fiji in 2021. I suspect there's not one reason why anybody would not want to go to Fiji. <laughs>